All right, thank you all uh, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here in Funa. Um, this is the fourth time I've been to a Typo Day, and ever since the first time that I came, which was in uh, Ahmedabad, uh, we've been interested in finding ways to make it easier to design Indic scripts. After a couple of years, we figured out that just going around and asking people was probably not the best way because there are so many different opinions and uh, different people everywhere. So we decided last year to go about it in a more formal fashion. Um, and as luck would have it, just at that same time that we were thinking about this, uh, Yashadeep Golap contacted us and uh, asked if uh, we had anything that an intern might be able to do um, at Font Lab. So we gave him the job of designing a study to find out what were the differences between the Latin type design process and the Indic uh, type design process. Of course, there's lots of reasons to do this um, from the commercial point of view. We'd like to have as good a product as possible. Uh, but also, uh, from a cultural point of view, um, it's important. Uh, India is becoming a much bigger market now, and India is developing rapidly in terms of typography and uh, type design um, these days. So we wanted to find out, you know, what were the differences. The way we went about this was to do um, interviews. Um, we wanted to get in-depth knowledge from beginning to end of uh, the type design process from people who were involved in it. So we went out and recruited a number of people, and this was a pretty lengthy interview. It's um, at least an hour of um, really in-depth uh, question answering and the like. Um, and Yashadi um, interviewed all the people, and then he compiled the results and analyzed them. And this, in fact, is his presentation, which he put together here. But unfortunately, he's in Denmark now, and he couldn't make it here to this conference to be actually presented. So there were a number of things that we uh, wanted to look at particularly. Um, you can see them on the screen there. The uh, questionnaire that we designed was made in order to bring out these kind of uh, attributes and differences in the, uh, in the font uh, making process. Um, and so the first thing that we studied was actually the process and compared it to uh, Latin type design process. What we found was that <clears throat> in the overall process, there is not that much difference. It's in the details and the qualitative aspects of the process that we found a lot of differences. Now, the first um, stage in any type design process is always the idea, the design idea and sketching a few of the preliminary characters and figuring out what the font is going to look like, um, getting the whole design concept down. And so there were a few things that were brought out in this character sketching stage, um, which are interesting um, from the uh, Indic point of view. Um, there's a lot of design judgment that goes into these fonts, so that's affected by Indic culture and uh, history and the like, like, and so you'd expect it to be different um, from Latin fonts in that respect, and so it is. The second stage is the digitization of the characters, or actually the development of the whole character set. Once you have the initial design idea in hand, then the next thing is to, you know, take that idea and make the whole font um, from it. That is, all the glyphs, design all the glyphs. Um, now, some people do this physically and then scan the characters in, while other people just go directly to the computer um, to do it. Um, but in either case, um, there's a lot of things about font proportions um, that are different between Indic fonts and Latin fonts that need to be taken into account here that we found out. And rhythm, spacing, balance, access, all those things also tend to be different in Indic fonts than in Latin fonts. The third step is developing all the glyphs. Once you've got your glyph set decided on, the design idea, then you need to really flush it out, flesh it out, get all the different uh, details in. Um, here you have to decide how many glyphs there are going to be in the font. Um, while an Indic open, open type font generally has 600 to 1,000 glyphs, that's not all that different from a good 
uh, a decent commercial Latin font. So in that in that case, um, things are pretty much the same, but um, they're different um, in terms of things like the, the of course the completion and the glyph set and how much time it takes um, and how much work it is to define those glyph sets uh, and define the glyphs, develop the glyphs. Um, and one of the reasons is there's so much more spacing and kerning, it seems, that have to be done in Indic fonts as opposed to Latin fonts. Um, and one of the things we found is that maybe the tools quite, aren't quite up to snuff for Indic fonts in this regard. Um, the letters tend to be somewhat more complex than, index, uh, than Latin characters are. Um, and the Devanagari faces have more than 2,000 kerning pairs. That would be quite a lot for a Latin um, font to have. Um, and they're not standardized. Uh, in Latin fonts, there are many sort of standard character sets and characters you know are going to need to be uh, spaced and kerned uh, more or less individually. And that's not nearly as efficient to do in an Indic font as it is um, in a Latin font. Um, and this is the really big difference in the process part here is the OTF development because there's <coughs> not much that really needs to be done in terms of OTF development in a Latin font. There's lots that can be done, but it's not absolutely necessary for the font to be a good font depending on what you want it to do. But in Indic fonts, it is absolutely necessary, and there's a lot of work that goes into this particular step um, in the process. Um, and in fact, Indic fonts consist mostly of the things that are added um, in this process, things that you don't find in Latin fonts at all. So these kind of things we took a close look at, um, and the way that they were done, um, how the uh, glyphs were managed, the various processes that were involved in this, in this uh, particular step, so forth and so on, um, because this is one part of the process which, while it's the same as Latin, it's qualitatively a lot different. It's much more time-consuming um, and difficult than in Latin fonts. Then there's the hinting process, also fairly difficult in Indic fonts compared to Latin fonts. Um, here, um, especially fonts developed again for low-res uh, applications like uh, television or low-res um, screens and things like that. Uh, you may have to do a lot of hinting um, for these. And in fact, um, in these sort of specialty fonts that, that are actually developed to be used in low-res applications, it's not unusual at all to start and work backwards, that is, start with sort of the bitmap font and then work backwards to get the final um, vector font uh, from it. In other words, start from the hints and then work backwards to get to the main character. And finally, there's a testing phase. Um, just like in Latin fonts, Indic fonts need to be tested and um, it's a bit more difficult for Indic fonts actually in the testing phase. There's um, a lot more things to be tested, and one of the things we found out that was that the software, again here, quite, wasn't quite up to the task um, in some respects. So font um, designers need their own customized testing files here, and we found out that people preferred to be able to test multiple things simultaneously, which is not really very easy to do um, in current software. So as you can see, during that process, this process of designing an Indic font, there are lots of technical challenges. Um, we got, of course, plenty of suggestions from the type designers we interviewed uh, themselves, but the analysis also brought out a lot of things um, where improvements could be made. Um, notably, the font info panel, especially about the metrics, vertical metrics, um, and uh, things like that. This is pretty technical and not, not many people really understand this and especially in respect to Indic fonts, not many people understand this. So this is an area where we need to make it easier and we may need to make it easier to understand as well. Similarly in font naming, 
Um, the rules for naming fonts are a little bit arcane. Um, they're not exactly difficult, but um, they're not really memorable either. So we need a better way to name fonts, preferably a, name, a way to name them automatically. So this one we've actually pretty much done because in our, our latest released product, TransType 4, we have a very sophisticated algorithm for naming fonts and organizing them in font families all done automatically. Um, that will be incorporated into future versions of the font editors as well. So this particular item on the wish list we're, we're already well on the way for. Um, in the font table, uh, we found that Indic type designers really like to have many different ways to organize um, the glyphs or the characters. Um, they love to have uh, different uh, viewing modes and markings and filters and so forth and so on. Um, and while you can do these things um, now, they're not as easy as they could be um, in the software. So one of our jobs is to try to improve that. Um, import options and file formats, well, you know, those are a bit uh, limited uh, as well. Um, and we need to be able to import more different uh, formats, especially all the different illustrator formats. Uh, for instance, we need to make it easier for people to import those into fonts to be able to work with. Um, guidelines are another area where there's significant difference between Indic fonts and Latin fonts. Latin fonts all have a very nice standard set of uh, guidelines which everybody knows. Indic fonts usually need more and different guidelines um, than Latin fonts. And in fact, they probably should be pretty much customizable guidelines. This is something which we really can uh, easily incorporate into future versions. Neighbors and shape groups in FontLab Studio 5, of course, you can find these kind of things, but they're much more important in Indic fonts than they are in Latin fonts. Um, so we need to also make these easier to use. And multiple layer editing functionality. We don't really have this in FontLab right now, but some designers, it seems, like to do a lot of things in different layers, especially for these rather ornate hand lettering or signage type um, fonts um, that they make. Um, we have a couple layers in Font Lab Studio now, but they're not really set up like illustrators layers, for instance, um, to do entirely different things, uh, and each one has more or less dedicated purpose right now. And then there's Python scripts. There are a lot of little tedious things that need to be done in building a font. And so lots of people had suggestions about, you know, what could we just write a Python script for to run real quick um, to do these kind of things. Um, this is not, uh, well, it depends, I guess, on your level of skill and your orientation towards programming, how difficult uh, this is to do. The Python scripting language is not terribly difficult, but it may be a bit intimidating um, to people who are not thinking in terms of scripting. And finally, there were some bugs and crash reports also during the, uh, that people found during their font making activities. And these seem to mostly have to do with the processing of large indic fonts with lots and lots of um, spacing and open type features um, in them. It was a bit surprising because, of course, Font Lab Studio can handle Chinese, Japanese, Korean fonts with up to, up to 64,000 characters with, you know, relatively few problems. But those are a lot different than Indic fonts because those, the Chinese, Japanese, uh, Korean fonts almost, use almost zero open type features. So it's not like there's a whole lot of internal programming to the glyphs. And that the opposite is the case in Indic fonts, where um, the majority of the glyph may actually be the internal programming um, part of it there. So here we see Font Lab Studio has a problem um, when it gets to these uh, big fonts with large numbers of uh, kerning or metrics or open type uh, kind of features. Now this one is really more, I think, a failure of education than it is um, actually a limitation of Font Lab Studio. The designers said that they wanted to be able to edit two masters um, simultaneously in um, a multiple master file. But in fact, you can edit 
two masters simultaneously in a multiple master file. So obviously we didn't get that across in the documentation um, somehow or other, um, but it can be done and in fact it's a very efficient um, and easy way to create um, a font family um, is to use this particular facility. So here we probably need to improve the documentation and make it a little bit more obvious how to do this kind of thing. The direct suggestions from the designers were things about they wanted everything in one place, for instance, that's where the holistic part of this presentation comes in. They wanted not to have to switch between this program and that program and then another program and then another program to get everything done that has to be done in building a font. They wanted an all-in-one um, piece of software. Um, and they also wanted this quick test function where they could quickly and easily install it on the operating system and test it. And in fact, that does already exist in Font Lab Studio and uh, Type Tool. Another little failure of education there because I guess it's not obvious enough, obvious enough um, for people. So, when we've looked at all these things, what uh, recommendations can we come up with uh, for improvements for the software? Well, file formats, obviously, everybody wants to be able to import and import uh, every file format they can think of, and that's a relatively easy thing to add. We shouldn't have much difficulty there. File info um, is a bit different. Uh, we've got the font, font naming thing, probably got that nailed down, but the metrics um, and auto calculation for vertical metrics particularly, um, and those other sort of technical things that appear in the font info panel, that all needs to be made clearer, easier, and probably more automatic um, than it is now. Tracing um, forms, uh, I mentioned before, a lot of people like to do their original sketches in a physical medium of some kind and then scan it in and do the digitization later. Um, Font Lab Studio does not have an internal type uh, auto trace um, function to do this with, but we do have a separate product called ScanFont that does this and is in fact optimized for scanning glyphs um, in there. Uh, way, way back in the beginning it used to be a part of Font Lab Studio, but it got separated out during the years. Um, so we will probably need to add that back in again so that the uh, um, a really high quality auto trace function is included in the main product. The window view, there was a, um, a bunch of things in the font table um, which they wanted improved. I mentioned before the things about um, filtering, marking, um, cell ordering, need better organizational tools essentially um, for the font table to make it easier to deal with uh, large fonts. Um, and then we need something that's a glyph edit interface that's more oriented towards the way that Indic type designers design. So this comes along and has to do with, again, the metrics um, and the Matras uh, OTF uh, programming, um, the metrics, the kerning, um, and so forth, and getting that all together in one place and making it um, easier um, to deal with. Um, glyph window view again here, this the quick function, we already have that, um, but shape group and neighbor functions, um, multiple outline layers, um, guidelines that, are, that can be custom named, all those kind of things need to be added to the glyph window. And for testing, um, we need to have better ways to print out uh, tests. Now, a lot of these actually are in there, but some of them need to be optimized so they work better for Indic um, type fonts. Of course, they were designed originally with um, Latin fonts in mind and not particularly with multiple master fonts in mind. So while multiple master fonts aren't used um, commercially anymore, that is, there aren't applications out there where consumers and users actually use multiple masters font, fonts, they are very much a good design tool, um, and Font Lab Studio will continue to use them and um, improve on them. Um, and these are some ideas that uh, people had about ways that, that could be improved as well. Metric panel, um, 
they really wanted, again, in the sort of all-in-one um, idea, they wanted to be able to do metrics and kerning and maybe the open type uh, feature previews, things, all these things in one place, uh, rather than having to switch back and forth between windows. Um, Weight interpolation, other things also, um, same sort of thing. This is the multiple master thing again. Need to make it easier to move, to use the multiple masters, to learn how to use the multiple masters, improve the documentation. Um, and then the built-in Python functionalities. There's, you know, a reason why Font Lab Studio has a built-in API for Python. And that's so that users can write Python scripts. So, for these particular ideas, um, we'd like you out there, especially the students out there, to take an interest um, in these particular things and many other possibilities as far as Python scripts are concerned. It may be a little intimidating at first because um, it's, it's writing in a scripting language. It's not drawing things um, with a pen or with a uh, computer tool. Um, but the rewards are really, really quite astronomical if you can think about how much work you can avoid by just writing maybe a Python script that's 10 or 12 lines long. Python is a really easy language to learn. Um, the documentation for it is all over the internet. It's uh, been stable for many years now. Um, the specific documentation for using with Font Lab Studio is in the Font Lab Studio manual and in the Python page on our website. So for these particular ideas, we'd like to throw this one uh, back out to you uh, out there and uh, have people out there develop the Python script. Don't wait for us. Don't be bashful. The tools are all there. Why don't you just go ahead and do it? Finally, the OTF features. OpenType is a very, very important part of Indic scripts, um, uh, Indic fonts, and um, we need really to improve the development tools that we have for that. Um, again, it would be nice if we can do the GDF, GPOS, and GSUB uh, tables a lot more intuitively, uh, visually, um, and the like, and um, testing them also uh, can be made a lot easier, and so that's also part of the program. So at this point, I think I'm pretty much close to the end. I'd like to play a little video that Yash made up to talk about the idea, these ideas for uh, the new design interface. Let me see if I can get it here. Thank you.